What you see here is probably one of the most user-friendly WooCommerce product add-ons plugins I have ever used. You'll see exactly what you'll get. Adding new options is really easy, just drag and drop. It works like a block builder. And when you're finished, it looks like this. I can use conditional logic to add all sorts of product options here. It looks really awesome. When I add it to the cart, all the stuff is displayed on the cart, on the checkout, on the thank you pages, and also in the emails. Setting this up is really easy. So if you're interested, then let's jump in. The plugin I'm talking about is called Product Add-ons for WooCommerce and Product Options with Custom Fields, the one you see on the screen. It's a brand new plugin released just a couple of weeks ago. It has a free version, this one here, and it has a pro version. Currently, they have a campaign going on, so you'll get a lifetime plan for unlimited sites only for $179. I purchased it myself. And in this video, I'm going to show you what you can do with it. Lifetime plan campaign lasts only 10 days more, so be sure to take a look at it. But now, let's go to the dashboard. After installing the plugin, you'll see there is a WoW add-ons menu on the left. If you go to the dashboard, you'll see the add-ons analytics. The same happens down below here. So, for example, if someone orders something, let's make an order. And now, after refreshing it, you'll see total sales, total orders, click counts, and add to cart count. You'll get all sorts of performance insights for your products. Also, you'll see the click rate, add to cart rate, and sales amount down below here. These are the analytics. Nothing else to configure here, so let's go to the options list. I'm going to deactivate my pizza configurator, and I'm going to show you how to create your own product options list. To add a new add-ons, just click on the button, give it the title, for example, pizza add-ons. Next, assign it to the product, whether to all products, specific product or specific category. I'm going to select specific product. Next, I'm going to choose my product, fantasy pizza, but I can choose more than one if needed. I'm going to close it down and next I'm going to add my add-ons. To add an add-on, just click either on this plus button or this button on top here. First, I'm going to select image swatches. I'm going to give it the title, select size. It's going to be a required field. I'm going to allow multiple pizzas. Next, I'm going to add an option called small. Let's add an image, this one here. Next one is medium. Let's add an image like this one. And last one is family pizza and image for this one also. Price type is fixed, but you can also choose the percentage, price per unit, or no cost. If you choose no cost, then you'll see no price will be displayed. I'm going to select the fixed price. So the regular price for small pizza is 7, medium 9, and family pizza is 15. I can also add sale prices if needed, for example, 12. And you'll see this is a preview here. I'm going to delete the sale price. Next, I can choose image swatches types. I like this one the most. One more thing, I'm going to activate quantity selector here because the user should be able to purchase more than one pizza. Image height is 100 pixels, so it looks good. Oh, well, done. Next, let's add a radio selection here. By the way, as you see, currently you have 24 different field types you can choose from. You can even choose WooCommerce products if needed. Just search for product. This one here, as you see, it won't display it because it's a variable product. So I'm going to select the variation black if needed. Easy peasy. But let's go back to the radio field. I'm going to add a title crust. Options handcrafted. Handcrafted with garlic. And third one is called pan. Price is 1, 1 1.5 and 1.5 euros. Let's add some images to those. This one for the handcrafted. This one for handcrafted with garlic. And this one is for the pan version. I'm going to scroll down, make images larger. For example, 64 pixels by 64 pixels. And take a look at this icon here. Now I can change the layout. I like this view more, so I'm going to leave it like this. If I need to hide the title, I can do it here, but I'm going to display the title as it is. 
Okay, next one is gonna be checkbox. The title is gonna be select extra toppings. Let's add some options, for example, crispy bacon, chicken, pepperoni, ham, spicy pork, and pineapple. Next, I'm gonna add images. This one for the bacon. This one for the chicken. Next one is pepperoni. Let's select this image here. This is for the ham. Next one is spicy pork. And last one is pineapple. I'm gonna select the layout as two columns and done. Okay, a couple of other fields to go. So therefore I'm gonna select a radio field. Title is gonna be sauce. First option is just a sauce. Second one is tomato sauce. And third one is no sauce. Let's add some prices. No sauce is zero. Ah, extra toppings. I forgot to modify the prices. So one, one, 1.5, ham is 2 euros, spicy pork 2, pineapple 2, let's delete the sale prices. Okay, almost there. Next one, let's add a color swatches. And the title for this one is pizza box color. Let's add some color names, for example, MX1, VX1 and KX1. Height for it is... 42 pixels is a bit better. Awesome. Next one is another image swatch. And this time I'm going to give it a title called Would you like a drink? Quantity selector. First one is Fanta. Second one is Sprite. And third one is Coca-Cola. Let's add images for Fanta. Next one for Sprite. And let's add an image for the Coca-Cola also. Prices for those are added here. And there you go. There it is. Next one is a button. I'm going to add a button. Well, this one here. The title is going to be delivery information. First delivery option is local pickup. And the second one is called pizza courier. And done. Now, if I need to rearrange the position of the field, I can just drag and drop it. As you see, it works really, really well. I'm going to leave it down below here. Okay, two fields to go. First is delivery date. Let's search for the date field. There it is. And last one is time field. Let's add a time field down below here. Now, as you see, it displays prices, but I'm going to select no cost because it's just an informational field. Under the date field, you can disable days. For example, let's disable Sundays and Saturdays. And I can also disable some dates if needed. I'm going to select two of those. Now, I want these two fields to be displayed only if the courier option has been selected. So I'm going to select the conditional logic. I'm going to enable conditional logic for this element. I'm going to show this field if any of these rules match. And now I'm going to select delivery information is. I'm going to insert the value here. Next one is delivery information is. And I'm going to add this value here. Next, I'm going to add another field. This time it's going to be switch. I'm going to add it here. I'm going to add a title. Do you want to customize your pizza? Title, yes. Price type is no cost. And why did I add it here? It's because I want to display this field, also this and this field conditionally. So I'm going to select a crust, conditional logic, enable conditional logic, show this field if... Do you want to customize your pizza is true. Now I'm going to repeat the same with other three fields. So as you see, it works really fast and it's easy to set up. Two to go. Therefore, let's do it quickly. Last one is here. Conditional logic. Enable it. Show if. Do you want to customize your pizza is true. 
I forgot to enable it for this one and just to verify, yeah, works for others. Okay, let's save it. Let's publish it. Now let's open up my pizza and refresh it. And there it is. As you see, pizza fields, conditional fields and, ah, okay. So I forgot to make this field also conditional. So let's fix it. Delivery information is either local pickup or a pizza courier. Let's save it one more time. Let's refresh it and let's test. Yes, now it works as I wanted it to work. Now a couple of other things. If you take a look at the global style, then you'll see that you can customize every element that is heading, fonts, colors, field titles, content, placeholders, prices, section titles, field component style for section inputs, range sliders, checkboxes, radio buttons, switches and image watches. These are the current options. If you don't know what is a section, then you can drag it here and add a title for it. For example, drinks, add everything inside here and done. There are also a bunch of other fields, color picker, range slider. It looks like this. URLs, phone numbers, number, email, text field, text area, heading, spacer, separator, and shortcode. What you can do with the shortcode, you can add your own stuff here. For example, let's drag the shortcode block here. Now I'm going to grab this contact form shortcodes. I'm going to paste it here. Let's save it. Let's refresh the page. And you'll see there's my contact form. But since I don't need it, I'm going to delete it, resave it, and done. Now let's go to the WooCommerce orders. This was my last order. You'll see all the options that has been selected are displayed here. Awesome, isn't it? As you saw, setting up your product add-ons with the help of the WoW add-ons plugin is really easy. Just to remind you, currently there is a campaign going on. You can get a lifetime plan for unlimited sites only for $179. The campaign lasts for the next 10 days. So maybe you give it a go. Wait, if you find this tutorial helpful, then press thumbs up, this one here, and take a look at this side of the screen. It contains two good videos. I think you may find them useful. Meanwhile, take care. Bye.